So I believe you know how to get this boss because I have several videos giving you hints, 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 and showing you on how to get this boss perfectly. So just go ahead and we put the link down below for to make it easier for you to watch the video. So I have this already. So what I'm going to do now, I have already traced out using this after cutting it my neckline actually I have a video on how to do this and how to get your arm hole. I have traced out my from my lining as well. So what I want to do now is to get mark of my zipper allowance. So I went on to place it like this and trim out my side for my back. So this now is my zipper allowance and I want to get a mark where my zipper allowance is going to stop. So with this I'm just going to use this to roll use my shop to rule out and just put a notch like this. So I just want to put this mark to indicate that it is when my zipper allowance stops. So because all the work you are going to sew is an inner sewing. You are going to sew everything inside because of the rough food we have at this thing. That is where this work is very interesting because it is it is difficult. That is why I like it like to see it is interesting because i like things like this so you don't have to be afraid of any difficult something so before coming out to show you on how to do this i have studied this a lot study it a lot and i want to do so I, I came to a conclusion so that is what i want to do so before you do anything make sure you study your work that is very very important for you to do so if there is anything i need to change from my map that i have drawn out before coming out to do this if there's anything I'm going to do or change, I will let you guys know. But for now, I haven't changed anything yet from what I want to do. So you know this work, you need to be thinking fast even when you are working. So you'll be able to come in a better way to do something. So let me continue with what I want to show you guys now. So what I'm going to do now is to, is to sew this part close first. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sew here close. So let me roll out my lines instead. So I'm, I'm going to sew it close down to this spot. So it will enable me to enable me to, enable me to get my measurement. So I'm actually going to do the same thing for my lining. This is what I always do to get my zipper allowance line. So here this line now is where my zip is going to sit. So I'm going to sew from here down. I'm going to do the same as my lining and do that and come back to you. Okay, so at this point here, I'm going ahead to do, as I told you, for my back, sew it and I went on to press it open. So that after losing this, I will have my crease line at the end. I will have my crease line at the end. So for my for my front as well, I went on to, to hold back my my lace and my main satin fabric together. So it does not give me any issue when coupling the neck. So go ahead to do that. Also for the back, I went on to do the same. So what I am going to do next now is to pin this down and take my measurement for my bust and my waist measurement down. I have done video for this, so I, I don't think I will go on to show you guys on how to do this because I don't want to waste your time. I just want to give you the key points on how to do this with ease. So you can go ahead to use the way I have been doing my measurement to get yours. So let me go ahead to do this for this. So after pinning get my measurement, I'm going to sew it down and do the same for this. So let me go ahead to do that and come back to you. So this is work in progress, as you can see. So because of the flounce we have at this up, we have to do our, we have to do our bodies like this. It is very important for you to have a good and clean finish. We need to do it very neat. So that is the process which we are taking right now. So this is work in progress. So what I am going to do, as I told you, I don't want to waste much of the time and I have explained on how to get this kind of sleeve. This sleeve is an off shoulder sleeve, but it is sitting on the shoulder. So if you take a look at the picture, it is sitting on the shoulder, not, not on the main shoulder. There is still a way you can sit it on the right shoulder. But this is sitting like about 1.5 inch or 1 inch from the main shoulder. That is where it is sitting. It is not that off. So you can still make it that off and you can still make it sit at that point. It all depends on your arm hole. So your arm hole gives you the right to address your, your shoulder in a way you can sit it the way you want. So because I want it to sit like the way you can see on the camera now, 
I'm not going to make my ammo to come like this. I'm going to make it to sit. I'm going to make it like this. So meanwhile, I'm still going to use the depth of my ammo, but I'm going to use try my best to make it in a slanted form that it sits like this and not like this. You get what I'm trying to say. So that depends on your armhole, how you train your armhole gives you the right to make your shoulder in the form you want. So this is a privilege guys, it's really a privilege. So let me go ahead to take my shoulder measurements then I will mark out my lines before cutting. I don't want to waste much of your time as I always say, because I want to give you the point, the hint point on how to get this style. So, as you can see now, I have a video on how to get this neckline. That was why I wasn't able to show you guys, so I don't want to waste time. I want to do this because I have the honor to do this. So, with that video, if you follow what I did on that video, that was how I was able to get my lines here to my off shoulder. But because I want this to sit at the shoulder a bit, it should sit at the shoulder a bit. So, what I'm going to do for this part now, I'm going to come in about one inch or 0 0.5 inch so let me see how many i'm going to okay let me see one inch i come in by one inch at this top here one inch at this top here so let me all run my lines to see how the off should look like from this part to see if i will make an adjustment to make it 0 0.5 okay so let me make an adjustment to make it 0 0.5 so from my off shoulder there now I came in by 0 0.5 reducing it from the one inch to the 0 0.5 so I was able to get my armhole I made it I, I explained it on that one you know to get your armhole is your boss divided by 6 plus 1.5 so that was how I was able to get the depth of my armhole which is 8.5 so this 8.5 now minus my 4 inches which I did after cutting my off shoulder. I have explained that in my previous video on how to get your off shoulder. So I get my 8.5. That is where you can see my mark here. Before getting my calculation, I just want to break you on that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut this off from this part. I'm going to cut this off down to that spot. So after doing this, I will go ahead to cut my so you can see what I have there now. So I will go ahead now to cut my sleeve and I will cut this part. Maybe I should cut this part before going to my sleeve so you can understand better. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so here is my fabric which I want to I want to use to get my sleeve. So all I did was to get my ammo measurement, which is 8.5 as I told you. I was, I was able to get my almost to get 8.5, that's what I have here. So to get my off shoulder measurement, I want to use from my full shoulder. I want to use from my full shoulder to get my off shoulder. So here is 22 for my full shoulder, for my, sorry, my full sleeve rather. To get, I want to use from my full sleeve to get my off shoulder sleeve. For my full shoulder sleeve, I want to use that to get my off shoulder sleeve. So this is my full shoulder sleeve cut which I have there. So to get my off shoulder sleeve, I'm going to minus three inches here. So I'm going to take off three inches from my full shoulder sleeve to get my off shoulder. This is pretty simple. Taking out three inches from my from my full shoulder sleeve to get my off shoulder. So after doing that, what I'm going to do at this my shoulder point, because we are not making use of these lines anymore. So let me see if I can be able to terminate this by letting you know that we are working with only this part. So what I'm going to do at this spot now, I'm going to use 4.5, 4.5. Because when getting my calculation at this point, I was able to reduce four inches from this point. So when getting your this thing, if you follow the measurements, the way I showed you on how to get your off shoulder, what I was able to do was to reduce four inches. And for my sleeve, I included 0.5 for the turning of my sleeve. So after doing that, I will come back again and use my four inches, which I used at that part, and getting my 8.5. Say 8.5 at this point. Then from this my 4.5, I'm just going to connect a slant like this. 
Remember, this is not a full shoulder that you give it to the hog. I just let my slant from this point down to this point for my full shoulder, for my armhole spot. So what I'm going to do now is to get my calculation of my armhole. How many do I have for my armhole? So at this spot here, what I have now is probably five inches. That is what I have there. So here now, here is my five inches, which I have there. And what I have left here is about 1.2 inches, 1.2 inches. So for the sake of this 1.2 inches, remember, we are still going to join it to this slim. So for this thing now, we are still going to bend it in. So here now I have five inches. So this five inches now will go. So this five inches will go. Then this part now, we are going to use it to join our sleeve and our sewing allowance. Keeping that sleeve. So my for my round circumference now is nine. Nine inches for my long sleeve, then one inch for sewing allowance. So just probably the same thing with my armhole at this spot here. So I'm just going to connect it down to this point. As simple as ABC. Let's go ahead to connect it down to that spot. So I want here now to sit as probably this way to the shoulder. So let me go ahead to trim this out. Then continue with my explanation so you understand better. So let me just go ahead to cut this out. Cut this out like they come back to you. This is very interesting. So you can see what I have here now my sleeve. After cutting it just like it, as I explained, I believe it was well explained for you to understand. So what I'm going to do next now is for my body. So let me just show you how from this part, you will know if you are going to adjust it to the way you want. So let me just give you, let me just place it in a way that I'm going to see for you to see where it will sit after sewing. So you can see where it is going to sit after sewing. So you can see, this is where it is going to sit after sewing. But I didn't mean I did not take off that my 0.5 inch. Then I place it like this. You can see it has shifted. Then if I just went on to cut my armhole straight down to this point, then I place it like this. You will see that it is shifted. As I told you, it is your armhole, the shaping of your armhole that determines your sleeve. After getting it this shape, the way you trim your armhole will determine how you want it, you want it to sit. If you still want it to sit more than this, we are still going to trim this in and place it like this. You can see it is more offer. But what we I want now is to have it like this. So like this, when she puts it on, she can still adjust it like this if she wants. It will still sit well and balanced. So that is that for this. So what I'm going to do next now, for the sake of this tutorial, because I told you there is a there is a target which I am aiming on this tutorial to get that finish for that crinoline for that flange at that up so you need it to go and you need it to sit inside that is my aim now i want it to sit inside i don't want my rough edges to show outside for my flounce i want it to be inside so for you to get something like that you are still going to pass your flounce from your sleeve you are still going to pass you are still going to pass it on your sleeve so what i'm going to do now is to cut a piece of satin because i want to give my sleeve a good strength, a good force to be able to hold my my flounce that I will sew in so it will not get torn. So I need to apply a, a force at this part to make it stable so it will be able to withstand any shoulder fitting. So you need that to be able to do. So let me go ahead and cut what I'm going to use to put here and come back to you. I have gone ahead to cut out my satin. So what I did was just to place my fabric like this on my satin and I went on to cut out so you can see the little piece which I have so I'm going to use this piece now to attach on my satin it was on fold when cutting take note so when I open it now you can see the fullness of my satin so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew here attaching it together for this part I'm going to I'm, I'm going to fold this right because as I told you, I'm still thinking of how to, because your lining still needs something like sleeve like this to fix this. So this is where the calculation now is going to, oh, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. So let's continue. 
But I thank God, God will give me a, a clear on how to pass through it because here, yeah, this part, I know this part will be creative. It, it will take you a while to get something, but you need to start for you to, to forge ahead. You need to start. So by doing that, I will find my way on passing that through. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave this rock. This part, I'm going to leave it rock. I'm going to stitch here down. I'm going to leave it rough like this first. As we as we proceed, idea will come on how to do that. So let me stick to my plan. So this as well, I'm going to do this same thing as this other sleeve. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut, I'm going to use my sleeve to cut out my lining. But I'm not going to cut out sleeve. It's not possible for you to cut out sleeve. But you are going to cut this base, or I will see just use this to cut out my base for my lining. Because I need it as a turn up for my lining. So I'm going to form my own base with my lining with this. So I will keep this aside. Then for your main fabric, you're going to join your side. So to make sure it does not lose, you're going to join both sides, both for your main lining and your main fabric. So let me go ahead to do this necessary steps, which I also did and come back. Work in progress. So there is something I want you to do for me in the space of two minutes. I want you to like this video i want you to subscribe in case you have not and i want you to share to your friends and tell them to subscribe that is all i want and you can also comment if there is any way you don't understand you can also comment so i will be able to explain it to you and i hope you understand it after that so just do that in the space of two minutes so they come back quickly so i have gone ahead to fix this and i made some little changes so at this part i told you i was going to leave it like that so i went on to attach my gum stay my paper stay and i folded it i did not leave it off because why i told you you need to think fast there's no big deal about that what i mean about that is that before you do anything you should be able to have a clue on how it will finish why i say you should think fast think fast you should be able to use your mind your mind to imagine, to think, to see the result of what you want to start. You should see the result before doing it. So it ends up the way you have already thought it to be. So you go ahead to calculate how it will be, how you are, what and what you will do before you arrive there, before going in. So you don't just go without placing your formations, setting things in place. So that is what I what I meant by thinking fast. It is very, it's, it's not difficult. Just please just try it in case you have not been trying it. You should have a clear, a clear vision, if not that clear, but you should have a vision of what you want to do. Then go into it. So before doing this, these are my thoughts which I have in my mind. I told you by the process of doing it, I will come to a conclusion on how to do some corrections and the rest. So here yeah, you can see how my shoulder looks like. You can see how it looks like. So I also have it on my lining because we are, because of the sake of the flounce, we need a replicant of our main body. I hope you are feeling the English. You need a replicant of the main body. So what I'm going to do now, why I am doing this is to, because I want to get my measurement of where my flounce is going to stop. So after doing this, I'm going to split this open i'm going to split this open then i'm going to take my measurement that is the reason why i went on to fix my sleeve because i after fixing my flounce i was going to use this to turn it in because i want a very clean clean finish at everywhere of this up so with the process which i'm going to show you now we are going to do that please if in case you don't take me serious, please take my words serious. I'm serious about this, so you should at least take it serious. Like what I just told you about your about you thinking fast. You should take that serious. Consider that. Try it. So what I'm going to do now is to take my measurement because my flange is going to start from this point down to this end, then from this point down to this end, which means I'm going to get two flounce. That is what I'm going to work with. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use one measurement to get the other. So let me just calculate one measurement to get the other. 
So what do I have for me to do spend? I have 21. So right here I have 21. So my flounce in total is going to be my flounce in total is going to be 21. But you know, we are going to sew our flounce. So we need to add our sewing allowance included. So I am going to make it either 22.5. This is either 1.5 sewing allowance or 2 inches or 1, but to be safer, I'm going to use 22.5. That is 1.5 inch for my sewing allowance. And I have a video on how to get this your flounce, so I don't want to, as I told you, anything I have done when it comes to this, but I'll just, I'll just link you to that video to make it easier because I don't want to waste much time on this. So I will go ahead now to get my flounce and I will come back to tell you the calculation which I use for the width of my flounce because you can see it is not, the flounce is not small so the width I am going to tell you what it is then. Let me go ahead to do that and come back to you.